Hi, I'm Daniel Chan from UNSW Sydney. Welcome to another adventure in pure mathematics. In this video, I want to tell you about the notion of fiber products and how it relates to the notion of Galois covers. So to start off with, uh, I want to tell you the definition of what a fiber product is. So this is something that we looked a little bit um, at in the previous video. Uh, so it's a notion that's a categorical notion. So we'll work in some category C. And the data that's used to define a fiber product is firstly, uh, basically the bottom right hand side of this square here. So you'll need firstly uh, three objects, X, Y, and Z. And you'll need two maps, uh, a map F from X to Z and a map G from Y to Z. Then uh, what is this fiber product here? This X cross Z, Y, it's something that fits in a diagram like this. So firstly, there's a projection map from here to here. Okay, uh, projection one that goes from x cross over z, y to x, and a projection two to y. And it's such that uh, this square commutes. So if you go around this way, it's the same as going around this way here. Okay, so normally if we just have a fiber product, uh, or a product rather, of uh, two things, okay, for example, in the category of sets, okay, or even of topological spaces, you can project onto each factor. So there you have something that's similar, except for you have this extra condition that you have to um, have a commutative square like this. Now, what you want is an object which has this property, but is also universal with respect to this property. So what does that mean? Suppose you have another object which has the same product uh, uh, type of uh, property. So in other words, there are maps from this uh, other object U to X and Y like this, such that uh, the diagram commutes. So if you go around this way, it's the same as going around this way. Well, in this case, uh, there's a unique map from here to here. So there exists. A unique map like that. Okay, so just to give you some examples of what this uh, fiber product looks like, okay, so this is something that depends on the category whether it exists or not, okay, in the category of sets or topological spaces it always exists and it's quite easy to define what it is, okay, so what is the fiber product in either of these two cases? So firstly, uh, the fiber product x cross over z y it uh, starts with the usual product, x cross y. So you look at all pairs, x comma y inside there. So of course you have x comma y, you can project to x and you can project to y. But it's not necessarily the case that if you take an arbitrary pair in here, you project this way and this way, that they'll have the same image inside z. So what we're gonna do is we're not gonna look at all the pairs inside here. We'll just look at the pairs where uh, this will commute. In other words, f of this x, is going to be the same as the g of the y. And if you look at that subset of those elements, then uh, it will be the fiber product. Okay, so that's the fiber product in sets. And of course, if you use the usual uh, induced topology on this subset uh, of x cross y, uh, that will also give you the fiber product in the category of topological spaces. So remember the reason why we introduced this fiber product? Okay, so in the special case, where you have two subsets, u and u prime of z, and what you can do is you can use the inclusion map here, so that gives you the data that's required to form a fiber product, and you can look at u cross z u prime, and it turns out this is naturally isomorphic to u intersect u prime. Okay, so that's the point. You have the intersection here, u intersect u prime, you can have the inclusion to u and u prime, and of course, since you're just doing the inclusion, uh, the bind maps into Z is just the inclusion. And that's why um, you have this commutative diagram. And it's quite easy to see that it's actually universal with respect to that as well. Okay, so let's now move on to Galois covers and the relationship this fiber product or what the fiber product can do to tell us a bit about Galois covers. So suppose you have a covering projection pi from y to x and let g be the Galois group of y over x. Okay. Then what can you do with this setup? So what we'll do is we're going to construct the following map, okay? G cross Y is going to map to this fiber product Y cross over X, Y. Okay, so you've got a map from Y to X, and we're going to use the same map twice and form that fiber product. 
what is this map? So we're going to take a pair g cross a g comma y here, and we're going to map it to g dot y comma y. Okay. So remember, this is the Galois group. Okay. So when you let g act on this y, okay, uh, this is a g equivariant if you let g act trivially on that. So that means the image of both y and g dot y is the same thing downstairs on x. Okay, so that's why this pair actually lives inside this fiber product uh, rather than just the usual product. Okay, it lives inside the fiber product. Okay, so that's a nice map like this. And the point is that this is an isomorphism if and only if this y over x is Galois. So this is a very, very interesting way of recasting this notion of being Galois in terms of whether this natural map here is an isomorphism or not. Okay, so I won't give you the full proof of why it's true, but the proof perhaps going in this direction. Okay, so suppose you have something Galois, I can tell you why this is an isomorphism. Okay, and we need to use a little bit about the theory of Galois covers. Okay, so here, if it's a Galois cover, you know that G acts transitively and faithfully on all the fibers. So any pi inverse of X, in the pre-image of any point inside here. Okay, remember you have the Galois action on that, so the Galois group acts on that, and it acts uh, both transitively and faithfully. So in other words, it's basically just a copy. That fiber is a copy of the group. Okay, so um, let's have a look at a single element in such a fiber, pi inverse of x. Okay, so what we're going to do to check that this is an isomorphism is uh, we're going to uh, firstly check that it's surjective and then check also that it's uh, an injective map. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at not the whole of this, but just the part of this where the second coordinate is y, this y here. Okay, so we're going to look at all the y prime comma y inside this fiber product. Okay, and we're going to check that that part of it corresponds to the, in a one-to-one -one bijective way, with the corresponding thing over there. So why is that? Okay. So what are all the things inside here? So to be inside this fiber product, what's the condition on this y prime? So this y prime is inside this y. Well, it just means the image of y prime uh, inside x is the same as the image of y inside x. So basically, they both have live in this fiber. But remember that g acts transitively and faithfully on it. So this is precisely um, the possible y primes that you can have is basically just the orbit of y. Okay and it's just g dot y. So that's equal to g dot y. So this gives you the fact that it's um, uh, surjective, this map. So that co corresponds to the fact that g acts transitively, and the faithfully part tells you that it's also an injective map. And hence, this is a bijection, so it's an isomorphism, okay? So that's rather nice, and that's what happens if you look at the topological point of view. Now remember, these theories of uh, topology uh, and also uh, of field theory, they deal to each other, and they're really more or less the same type of theory. So I want to show you that there's a version of this when you pass over to field theory and the Galois theory of fields. So now let k over f be some finite Galois extension. Okay, and we'll let G be the Galois group, uh, the Galois group of K over F. And then what do you do here? So we're going to look at this, but remember the theories, even though they're the same, the more precise description is they're actually dual to each other. So we don't want the notion of a fiber product, but actually the dual of that. Okay, so if you like um, the fiber coproduct, but let me sort of just draw to you uh, what happens. Okay, so what is that sort of notion? So I claim that the, the dual notion uh, in this setting here, okay, is going to be the tensor product. So let's just see how that works. So firstly, we have a field F. And now this uh, K is a field extension. So this is a subfield. So there are inclusion field homomorphisms into K. Okay, so you can include. So this is like the dual of what you see in the bottom right. Okay, and so you have the data to talk about the dual of this fiber product. You want something up here. So what's that going to be? Well, it turns out that, firstly, this universal object exists, and it's just this uh, ring here, k tensor over f, k. Uh, certainly, k maps into here, uh, into the first factor as k tensor 1. OK, so you have that uh, algebra homomorphism. And similarly, you can map into the second factor. OK, so that's k tensor f, k. 
And the point is that, well, that's what it is over here. Okay, so that's the analog of this part here. Um, what's the analog of this part here? Well, it turns out that you have here essentially a number of disjoint copies of Y. Okay, so when you do this fiber product, okay, uh, it turns out that in this Galois situation, it's isomorphic to just uh, disjoint copies of Y. And how many are there? It's the same as the cardinality of G. So on the field side, what you'll have is you'll have an algebra. So you want to work basically uh, from an algebra geometric point of view. Okay, so the uh, notion corresponding to a disjoint union is the product of those rings. So it turns out here what you have is you have a product of the, the thing that corresponds to Y is the K. Okay, so it's a product of the Ks and how many um, factors of this K are there? There's as many as the number of elements in this group. And it turns out that you can actually use this to work out what is that map. So you can dualize what's going on here. And uh, so remember uh, this group, Galois group acts on this K. And it turns out that what this map is, was, is if you take an elementary tensor inside this K called tensor K, so let's say alpha tensor beta here, then you map it into a tuple, one for each element sigma inside the group. And this, uh, the element of K corresponding to sigma is just alpha times sigma of beta. Okay. So some things that you might want to check here is, well, is this really a map from the tensor product? Okay. So firstly, you can take it, check quite easily that it's um, by additive in each of the variables. Okay, it's uh, additive in alpha and additive in beta. And also, what happens is if you uh, have a scalar in F and you put it um, multiply that beta by that scalar, it maps the same thing as if you multiply the alpha by that scalar. And that's because what happens here is that well, if you multiply alpha by a scalar, that scalar is just sitting outside here. If you multiply beta by that scalar, since sigma fixes all of that uh, the scalars in F, you can pull that straight as, out as well. Sigma of that scalar in F is just the same as that scalar. So um, you can check uh, slowly that that actually gives you a well-defined map from here to here. And uh, it's a good exercise to show, just from a field theoretic point of view, that this is an isomorphism in this special case here. Okay, so let's have a look at some more examples of uh, fiber products, okay? So more generally, if we don't just have one uh, uh, Galois extension, of course, you could have two different field extensions here, K1 and K2, and take the tensor product of them, okay? So I wanna, what I want to have a look at here in this addendum is suppose K1, K2 are finite separable extensions of F. So what happens then? Well, we can look at this tensor product K1 tensor over F K2, and I claim that this is a product of separable field extensions. In this case here, okay, it, uh, if, if K1 equals K2 equals K, which is a Galois field extension, here it's the product of copies of K. And K, of course, is a separable field extension of F because it's Galois. But I claim that if you have arbitrary finite separable extensions, at least this part is still true and the proof is fairly easy. Let me just give it to you. So why is it true? So firstly, if K1 is a separable field extension of F, okay, you have the primitive element theorem. Okay, this is probably the easiest way to prove it. So you can uh, write it as just adjoining a single element theta. So it's this polynomial ring F theta modulo uh, the ideal generated by uh, some separable polynomial P of theta. Okay, so this is separable over F. So what we'll do now is we're going to tensor this up over F to K2. And to do that, what we'll need to do first is we'll need to factorize this P theta over K2. So we'll factorize it. P of theta, say, is a product of P1 theta up to PR theta. Okay, so that's the factorization into irreducibles over K2. Remember, P of theta to separable means that um, the roots of this in the algebraic closure are all different. So, of course, each of these P1 theta, P2 theta up to PR theta, they're also separable polynomials as well. Okay. And what happens now to, uh, when you tensor up to K2? We just change this F to K2. Okay, so uh, this tensor product is now just K2 theta modulo this uh, ideal generated by P of theta, but this P of theta is no longer necessarily irreducible. It could be a product of our things. 
And then what do you do? Well, these are uh, different things, okay? So there are no multiple roots, so certainly these are all distinct. And in particular, they're going to be co-prime, so you can apply the Chinese remainder theorem to see that actually this is just a product of K2 theta modulo the ideal generated by um, each of these uh, polynomials here. So you just have this product here. And each of these, of course, are separable field extensions, okay, uh, of K2 and hence also of uh, F. And that gives you the result here, okay? So let's play a little bit more with this notion of fiber products because it's actually quite fun and interesting in this Galois situation, okay? So what we're going to do here is we'll look at uh, a Galois cover, okay, y to x, that's going to be Galois with Galois group G. And what we're going to do is instead of just looking at the fiber product y cross xy, we're going to look at the triple fiber product y cross over xy cross over xy, okay? And you can define this um, inductively using the fiber product twice, okay? Um, so it doesn't matter whether you do this one first or this one first, or you can do it in a triple uh, definition, okay? In a way that's analogous to what you see here, okay? So they all turn out to be the same thing, okay? So what happens here? So one of the things that you see from this proposition is that, of course, if you just look at this first two factors, y cross x, y is isomorphic to g cross y. So you can write this as g cross y cross over x, y. Okay. And then you can use the proposition on the second part to write this as um, uh, g cross g cross y. And these are just normal uh, products here. So in particular, this G is going to be a, a discrete group, okay? So it's just a discrete set. Okay, so let's just see how this isomorphism works. And it's easier to work back from here over to this way. So here you have a triple G1, G2, and Y, okay? So the first thing here is you make the isomorphism of this uh, latter G cross Y into this uh, fiber product. So what you do is, what's the map? Well, basically, the first corner is you let the group element act on this uh, y, and the second uh, factor is just a projection. So you just project onto that y here, and you let the g2 act on y, so you get g2 dot y, comma uh, y. And then you use this same thing again, the same isomorphism, but applying to the this uh, pair here, the first two here, so g1 and g2 dot y. So the middle coordinate is the same as that, g2 dot y. The last one hasn't changed, that's still y. And then what's the first one? You let g1 act on this, so that's g1 g2 dot y. So here you're kind of encoding what happens when you not don't just act by one element of the group, but two in succession. Okay, so that's rather interesting that this triple fiber product, okay, does that for you. So what's now really interesting and will be important if you want to look at the descent data and the co-cycle condition, um, in for Galois covers, okay, is the following. So remember, when you have a, a fiber product, you can talk about projections, okay? So when you have a triple product, just as is the case when you have a triple, uh, the usual triple product, let alone the triple fiber product, okay, you can project onto the first two factors, the, uh, the last two factors. So first two factors will be projection one, two. The last two factors will be projection two, three. Or you can project onto the first and the last, and you think at the middle. Okay, so that's something that you can do. And it's quite easy to see that you can do that just using the universal property that you have here. Okay, so that's something that you can do uh, quite easily to show that there is a map from the triple product okay, to each of these uh, double products. Okay, and they do what you expect. And what's interesting though is that, well, each of these double products, remember, you can rewrite as g cross y. And then you can try to say, okay, so what is the corresponding map? Okay, so these uh, projection maps are naturally just defined from the fiber products, triple fiber products to the double fiber products. But now they're going to give you maps from g cross g cross y to g cross y. And it's interesting to see how they work out. So let's just do this as a uh, nice little exercise, okay? So for example, if you want to project onto the first, uh, maybe it's easiest to project onto the last two factors, okay? So projecting onto the last two factors, okay, means that on the fiber product side, you map this triple product to g2 dot y comma y, g2 dot y comma y, and that, corresp that corresponds to what? Okay, so that's inside this double product here. 
what's the corresponding element here? It's just g2, comma, y. Because what does this correspond to over here? So remember this formula here. You let the group element g2 act on y. Okay, so that's g2 acting on y. So that's what you have here, the second element. And the last one stays the same. Okay, the last one stays the same. That's what you have. Okay, so if you project onto the first and third coordinate, you have the y here and the g1, g2 dot y. So the corresponding element of g cross y is, well, the y is still the same. And then you have a g1, g2 here. And the last thing is if you project on the first two factors, you get these two. So this has to be the same. Okay, so that's your g2 dot y. And then what did you do to get to here? Well, you just let g1 act on it. Okay, and that shows you how this triple product um, uh, plays out. And it's rather interesting that you can view this triple product now as also just a number of copies of y. And uh, in particular, the number of copies is just given by uh, the product of the Galois group with itself. So this is going to be something that's extremely important when you want to study uh, the Galois theory for these Galois covers and how it's useful in descent theory. I hope you enjoyed this adventure in pure mathematics.